as a Christian who is pretty new in the faith, a little over one year now, you know, I take the sermons and the teachings from the Desert Fathers in a literal sense, that Christ defeated death. We don't have to, as Christians, we don't have to be scared of death. And then I've seen all these churches close, Orthodox churches too, Catholic churches, Protestant church. I'm like, wait, but I thought that the Christians run to death in the sense, because we're not scared of that. You know, Christ, he won at the cross. It wasn't a sad day for humanity. It was the, the best day. So I was, but then I talked to some other Christians and they're like, uh, they kind of advised me on a wait and see attitude. And how can I argue with that? But I found a blog, and this is a blog that I've only known for a couple of months that really made sense to me. So I wanted to read a little bit. The article is kind of long. I advise you to go and read it yourself, but I'm just going to read a couple parts that really hit 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 home to me. So this blog is called The Inkless Pen, and the address is inklesspen.blog. If you just Google. And it's a blog by Father Zechariah Lynch. I think he's in California. I don't know. I don't know him, but I've been reading this. And this blog is perhaps one of the best orthodox blogs that I have I have found. All right. You can also Google this, Christians in Times of Epidemic, then and now. Okay, so let me start the reading. The rationale for not attending church at current is based on the proposition that I could contract the virus and spread it to someone else. That is, I could put others at risk. This risk could include them becoming sick and dying. So the underlying reason for not attending is to not put others at risk. If I do, the impression is that somehow I'm failing in love. In recent times, for example, in communist countries, if a priest held a service, which was many times against the law, by that very action, he puts everyone who came to that service at risk. Were those priests wrong to hold services? After all, if they did not offer services, people would not come and would avoid the very real possibility of arrest and even death. Thus, the priest in this example is putting lives at risk. And then he says, There have also been many times when simply spreading the gospel put lives at risk. Preaching has been against the law of various local countries at various times in history. There have been many times that if a person even converted to Christianity, they were putting their life and those around them at risk. Moreover, the person actively converting them was knowingly putting lives at risk. So the kind thing to do would be not to preach the gospel so as not to put lives at risk. Thus, those who knowingly converted people in times of persecution were putting other people's lives at risk and were not showing love or concern for their neighbors. Thus, true concern would be not to preach the gospel so that people's bodies would not be threatened. Did true Christians stop because bodily death was possible? No. They preached the gospel and went to church. They even brought their children, risking their lives to be at church, to worship the living God. So much did they value ecclesial worship that for but one chance to worship and receive the holy mysteries, they were willing to risk the rest of their earthly existence. Sometimes I wonder if we do not just cloak our current lukewarmness in in pietistic clothing to further placate our modern lack of zeal our pathetic willingness to quickly abandon our posts under a potential threat is painted over with conscious numbing justifications. At least we can feel good about ourselves. This is how I feel. So Father Zechariah, wherever he is, he put my feelings into words. Again, I take the gospel in a literal sense. I take the New Testament in a literal sense. It's not a metaphor. It's not a symbol. It happened, and it's real. Now, the Old Testament, some parts of it is out there. 
you know, first example, like Samson's hair, let's say his ha- his hair gave him strength. I think that could be more of a metaphor for his lust when he fell for the woman, he lost his power and so on. But the New Testament, I take it in a literal sense. So when you have churches closing down and they're giving these mealy mouthed justifications, I-, I don't get it. I don't get it. Wait and see for what? You know, how do we how do you know Jesus is not coming now? Don't we don't I need to receive the body and blood of Christ now to prepare to confess? So I just don't get it. And if you're a Christian, I want you to tell me, Roosh, you're full of pride and you're wrong, and you just need to calm down and you need to wait and wait and wait. But you saw everything I've told you up to this point shows this isn't gonna end. If you're a church, you're not gonna go back to how things were. They're going to limit your attendance totally. So wait for what? Wait for Satan to grace us with permission to worship Christ? Is that what we have to do? We have to, please, Satan, Satan, here's my mask. Can I worship the God that you hate that's going to condemn you to the lake of fire? It's absurd. So you have evil clamping down on the churches, and then we just have to go along with it. I don't know. Please tell me I'm wrong. I'm full of pride and that I just need to calm down because I just don't see it. I don't see this, uh, yeah, we're just going to go. The experts. So Christians are defaulting to these to the rulers of this world. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is my faith talking or my pride. But I can just tell you that I was at my church service oh, for the nativity service uh, in December, the Christmas. It was fully packed. A lot of people. And then the Easter service comes. This should be more packed now. This is Easter. And we had Easter last week. And it's empty. Um That's just sad to me. You know, the time when people need to be there, they can't go because the law said they're posing a danger. Working on your soul, saving your soul and helping to save others is a threat, is a danger because people are going to die. Listen, if I'm in the church, if I'm in a crowd and I die, I die. But I should have that right to, to worship God. There's nothing more important. Now, if you don't believe in God, that's fine. But if you do, what's more important? My safety? My personal safety? And then they're going to have you convincing. Uh, they're going to have convince you that, no, if you go to church, you're going to get the virus and you're going to be asymptomatic and you're going to kill other people. Like, shut up. Just shut up. Okay? I'm not in fear like that. Yes, the world is dangerous. People die. But don't try to make me out to be some killer because I'm going to worship God. Get out of here with that. But that's what they're that's what they're going to use. If you go to church, you're gonna kill someone. Well, I'll tell you what, by you saying that, you're gonna kill souls. You are a murderer of souls. Okay, I may m- murder grandma, m- murder her, because I went to church. But but that's not as bad as what you're doing by closing churches, pushing the propaganda to keep them closed. I'm telling you. What if this whole coronavirus pandemic is really a low-key effort to close close churches? Like it was only about closing closing churches. (laughs) But it sucks because I want to go on Sunday to worship. And I'm told I can't do it. And I'm not really I'm not I'm not happy about that. 